Nate Marks. Finally, number one. Any relation to Karl Marx, barbecue sauce, bean smasher, Papa Ace, 3024, Sean, road to a thousand bench press. Hello, Maniac, Chris M. Fino one, Feta one, Eddie. What's up, you cookie cutter? Danny Duncan, KSP, Ryan McKenna from Florida, JBL, Ray Flanders, Dark Insane 22. We got a lot of new names. Brandon Peens, hello. Thank you, Chris M. Barbecue sauce. <laughs> Crown Vic lover. Where are you? New Jersey misfits. I enjoyed that little clip. Jerry Nechampkin gives us a thumbs up. Quick bump. Love you too, everyone. Everyone on here. And Road to a Thousand Bench Press is man enough to express that. That's not cookie cutter. That's a different story, John Wilkes Booth's last leg, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but... This is, oh, KSP, formerly Crown Vic Lover. Okay. Yeah, thank, we DM today on the Instagram. That was funny, thanks. Onyx is probably outside stalking food. Thoughts on Brad's live? I may do a reaction video, I may not. Okay, Jerry Nechampkin, okay. What's the best routine? Probably train four days a week. Train your pushing muscles, chest, shoulders and triceps, Mondays, Tuesdays, legs, back and biceps, Tuesdays, Thursdays. Just one or two movements per body part, basics, six to 10 reps. That's sort of a beginner's routine and that's a perfect thing, Lawrence, Paul Oreo, when you're getting done with a relationship because your brain is in a state of withdrawal. So make yourself busy. You'll get over it. Heartbreak, although the sounds cookie cutter, is for real. And there's ways to get about to overcome that. You can get back on track, which you have to do. I don't know. I have to explore more monkey pox. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. Thoughts on Brad saying, Valerie, I hate all the leather gear. Doesn't surprise me. Basically what I told you previously, Lawrence. Basic movements. Hit them twice a week. Progress slowly. But like anything else, progressively. Add five pounds to the bar each week if, if you have two and a halfs. Add small increments, stick in the six to 10 rep range. One or two basic movements of body parts. You can do it twice a week for a little, for a time being. KSP, I'm about, I don't know how many miles south of Vera Beach, or maybe a hundred. Max, the tax evading. Holy cow, whoa, <laughs> that's a new name. Holy cow. Well, in any event, here's the problem with music, listening to music. You have to realize, first of all, most of it has an, a satanic message behind it. There's no getting around that. It's patently obvious. And I'm not talking about blatant Satan, Satanism that like those that started in the 80s and continue today with outright satanic names and blasphemous lyrics. That's obvious, but it's a subtle, what I call pop music that is very, very detrimental. And everybody since listened to music at some point, we're not immune to it. It, it pops up everywhere. But there's a few things it does that negatively affects you and negatively affects your training. Number one, did you ever hear 
of a time when certain music would get into your brain and you keep hearing the song over and over and over again. Well, that's no coincidence. That's your brain being overcome by these sound waves that resonates with the electrical impulses the brain uses to function. And it get, they get cross-wired and it interferes with normal thought. And it's, if you're trying to study or memorize something, the worst thing you can do is have music in the background of any kind, any kind. Now, there's certain instruments that can have a soothing effect. For instance, a harp, a cello, uh, things like that, flutes maybe, but these non-man-made electronic computer modulated music has a worse frequency because it interferes with brain impulses to a very high degree. There's a music they call techno music. It's no coincidence that the more you listen to it and that repeated sound gets in there and you really, really get almost hypnotized by it. And other people use substances with it, alcohol and different types of drugs and it amplifies the effect. Anyone that's used Fenibut knows you get an effect from that as well. And it's going to affect your sleep. It's going to affect learning of different types of knowledge. And you ever wonder, you ever go to a concert? You see some of the dumbest low IQ people attending those concerts. I don't care whether it's a rap concert, rock and roll, whatever. You just see a certain element that you don't see anywhere else. And, you know, some people, they listen in the gym and it has helped them. I know for a fact my training partner, Meow Man, would get into a rage listening to certain types of music, like Hate Breed and things like that back in the day, Pantera. And it helped him with his aggression, his lifts. And maybe the only time he listened to it was when he was in his car or whatever, but it's not something you want to do after a workout when you're eating a meal and unwinding. Guarantee that digestion will not be 100%, as well as a sleep. You have to get the sleep. I can never say it again. I can't say it enough. In this day and age, REM sleep is at an all-time low. And for us maniacs, it's going to make you suboptimal. So, and in the workplace as well, a lot of companies allow music playing, most don't. You need to focus 100%. When there's too much outside stimuli, there's only so much focus you can attend on a task at hand. When I say flip that switch, you shouldn't hear any music. And if it is playing in the gym, which it usually is, I don't hear it during a set. I, it's not there. So use caution with it. I'm not saying eliminate it, but like anything else, certain times of the day to do it, certain times of the day to shut it off. And in the morning, do not do it. You need that transition from the REM sleep into meditation and prayer, which I try to do simultaneously. And then I also add in thinking of absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing, as I sit out and get that morning sun, which is hard for most people to get. I understand with the schedules, but afternoon sun is almost as good and there's always evening sun. So if you're in a workplace, Take your food outside. Learn to eat out in the sun. Learn to eat it when you're standing. Remember, you can always enjoy a meal at home seated at a nice table or recliner, but 
eating is a business and your brain is the most important part of your body. So there's subliminal messages in a lot of music, some that have been identified, some that haven't, but that artificial electric music can definitely interfere with cognition, information retention, focus, and just plain old sense of contentment, which you should have. And it can, like many pharmaceuticals, cause paranoia and stress. So I've never known a person that came back from a concert doing substances. You don't want to be around that person for at least two days after that. They're a, they're a mess. And it shows in the way they speak and in the way they think. So let's go back to 100, 200 years ago, where the only music was made with homemade instruments and wasn't a constant in everyone's lifestyle like it is. And now let me interact with my maniacs. It's been two days. And honestly, my training was so brutal the last two days. Today is my off day that I wasn't in a proper frame of mind to have a live and be at my best. So looks forward, look forward to getting back with you maniacs right now. Classical music, Raul. That's hard to say. Uh, yes, it helps to uh, to an extent because it's not an electronic device. It comes from man-made instruments. However, too much of it can still give you that repetitive. if interaction with the brain waves. Is all music bad? Asked Roy Larson. No. <laughs> The more electronic influence, the more repetitive sound, the worse it could be. And I'm not talking about subliminal messages here. I'm not talking about lyrics that glamorize drug use, riches, immorality, nothing like that. I'm talking about something in there breaking up the brain waves. <laughs> yes, rolling loud. <laughs> Wotan says music is based. What's dubstep, New Jersey Misfits? Yes, I've been jacked up on pre-workout before. However, it's it might give you a rep at best per workout. And the resulting effect on the pump 
and the appetite doesn't make it justifiable. Maybe on occasion, if you're going for rep records, but good evening, Jay McKay. Welcome to the live, Brandon Hines. If you're doing bad, that's a good sign. You recognized what's bad, what's negative. Now, feel free to give us details and the maniacs can help. JR says, what about playing rap music while buying the latest sneakers? <laughs> Greg Stewart simplifies it. Music is for cookie cutters. Didn't Brad go to a Slipknot concert? I think so. I think Jay did too. <laughs> What's Brad up to tonight? Well, let's, let's see. <laughs> Probably, I don't know if his son's leaving, maybe a big barbecue. I don't know if there's a UFC event. I would assume he's home, but then again, he could just be at a comedy club or at a bar. Big Daddy, thanks again. That was perfect. <laughs> Big Daddy wants to flip the switch. Kaizen Production says Brad is up to smoking during his training. It seems like he's getting a little less dedicated, down to three days training a week. Actually, Greg Stewart, me and Meow Man worked security at a few death metal concerts. And believe me, it was an ear destroyer. <laughs> it was so offensive to me in every way, shape, or form. But it got to be a real treat once the cookie cutters in the mosh pit accidentally brushed up against a Meow Man who was standing at security making sure nobody got badly injured. <clears throat> when I saw him throw a human being across about 15 feet <coughs> through the air above his head. Rush brings a different take. He works out in dead silence and listens to Patera and Slayer to relax. That's different. <clears throat> laying out after workout feels awesome. I assume you mean laying out in that vitamin D, Chris M. Actually, I was near the topic for a future lie, but I want to talk about the perfect post-workout protocol. And I discussed it briefly with a top-tier IFBB female bodybuilder from Canada on our, my DM this afternoon. And she's a tan, of course. And I definitely got her attention with what I proposed. John Miguel, coffee again. It's like the subject of music. It's like the subject of caffeinated pre-workouts. It has benefits and it has negatives. For your own personal goals and objectives, you have to decide whether the, go the side effects are outweigh the goals for yourself. 
And for me, the number one thing about coffee, I don't want to take it is, see the teeth? Coffee is a horrible, horrible teeth darkener. Now, I know a man, actually it was old man Chuck. He had white teeth and he was a coffee drinker. He told me he sipped coffee through a straw. But number two, the smell and taste of it, just the smell alone, because I never tasted it, sounds absolutely disgraceful. And what's the point of coffee? Caffeine. Well, I'd rather, if I'm going to do caffeine, I'd rather take in a pill, a powder with a pre-workout or something like that. Yes, Jerry and the Champkin, REM sleep is the most important thing. The most important thing to success in life, all facets of life. We cannot stress it enough, Jerry. That's why anybody, I know I apologize for going a little late today, but definitely, definitely get your sleep over above anything else. I would even say when you need sleep, sleep over a meal. Jay McKay, do I get prank calls? No, I never did. Uh, actually, when my number was put out publicly twice, I never considered anything a prank call. John Miguel tore his hamstring. I'm sorry to hear that. The best thing to do is the best thing you could do to heal your muscles. Sleep, rest, and rehabilitate. Now, rehabilitating can mean you standing up, holding on to something at home, and doing a standing leg curl with no weight just to get the blood in there. If it's a little too early to do that to where you might get further tearing, just let it sit, spend time putting hot water on it in the shower and get some sun on it. But with anything, training eating, and sleeping, those muscles will heal and you will make 100%. Now, let me know how the, what caused that tear because I know a lot of tears have caused from bodybuilders from doing heavy, stiff-legged deadlifts, even regular deadlifts. I've heard guys tear the hamstring. I tore part of the hamstring and my whole adductor on the leg press, and I pulled my hamstring doing sprints. Sprints can be very, very hard on the hamstrings as far as pulls and tears. So use caution with that, but you can come back to 100%. Yes, Jerry and the Champion. I apologize for that. I, it doesn't do anybody good to take a day off of the live. Sassy, we always miss you, but thank you for the DMs. They're absolutely lovely in every way, shape, or form. How brutal is Brad's training? Well, I'll tell you what, the humidity and heat in there is brutal. It definitely affects you to work out in a negative way, but it will toughen you up, I'll say that. I mean, you're gonna come out of there drenched. Even your underwear and socks are gonna be drenched. But is that the most productive way to train? Not when you limit your weight because of total body exhaustion. And obviously you need to have the water there. You have to be there on electrolytes. But I do believe the body can adjust to that. And I do think his intensity always needed to go up. I rarely saw him train to failure, but Kevin Dominguez, late night training.
would not be as optimal as early morning training or midday training. However, if that's the only thing your schedule allows, you have to make the best of it. My concern is there may be difficulty sleeping, getting into REM sleep after that late night training session. My father did it, which is probably with his schedule when he, when he was working, I was living with him. That was an optimal time for him. But strangely enough, he went to bed after training with an empty stomach. He ate his final meal, then he trained. And then he didn't eat it again until the next morning. So. Well, Lord Vader apparently said that once his grandmother passes, he will be back on the internet. I hate to hear him talk in those terms, but I just see no real reason why he couldn't go back now. Hello, Michael. Does anybody give me an update on how monkeypox is spread homosexually? I'm hearing that it's, it's in the homosexual community. But what specifically would, would cause that? I know HIV transmission, the way they transmit that is can make you very prone to HIV infection. But in what way does any of that attributed to monkeypox? Tommy the Train listens to black metal and in crypto tech. No PCT needed for burnt antibody line series. The more androgenic the compounds, possibly more PCT, but I think PCT is somewhat become very overrated with further experience and research. Rob D8870 says, music feeds the soul. Care for what you eat. That is true to an extent. It, can, it could feed the soul, but it also could interfere with learning, cognition. And that song you hear over and over again when you don't want to, that is not good. Kaizen Productions listens to old school meta and Japanese pop music. Very interesting. I'll have to research Japanese pop music. and my thoughts on SARMs, yes, they're effective. Use the ones like RAD 140, Carterine, things with a proven track record on it, because I think there's hundreds of them now, and there's many more to come. I do believe the technology will get better. Barbecue sauce says, Lenny, what will happen first? You meeting up with Jay or becoming employed? <laughs> Michael says, if you're doing bad, turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thoughts on death metal in the gym? Probably the best place for it. 
Because when you're in the gym, you want to feel uncomfortable. You want to feel agitated. You want to focus on pumping out those reps. So I believe that's probably the only, and I don't know if you call it death metal music, but it's like a war. What do they call that doing? A war. uh, uh, When they went, went to war, they had different types of bands playing drums and it was a war chant. That's what that is more. I wouldn't call that music. Magnus, I haven't thought about Masteron, to be honest, but I may look into the research. And I, I don't want my inter and the fluid retention of my joints going down because I think that the more lubrication of the joints, the more you're able to put maximum force and tension on the muscle. So I will look into that, though. From a research standpoint, of course, I'm not quite ready to make that part of my total protocol though. Sassy Savage Goddess has the greatest comments of the night. She gave her heart to God. And the beauty in that is he won't forsake you. Sure, we as humans will sin again, but it's always nice to know that God is with you at all times, no matter what. And you can be with him in eternity, no matter what. You just have to receive him. And thank you, Sassy. And anybody out there that's feeling down like a, a maniac at the beginning, depressed, whatever, wants attention, uh, maybe he's been rejected in a relationship or a job, just Ask God to come into your life. Acknowledge you're a sinner. Accept Jesus. That's all you have at the end of the day. That's all you have. All, all the thing you can get, you're guaranteed. You're not guaranteed another drop of water or, or a piece of food. You're not guaranteed you're going to have a, ever sleep again. But you can guarantee that the Lord will be with you. Jerry Nichampton, Charles Glass is a great personal trainer. Uh, he may not be the type of guy to go to when you want to be a mass monster, but he's the guy you go to when you need those outer sweeps. You need to reduce the waist, add width to the shoulders, add lower back thickness. He can get you, he can look at the body and see where the weaknesses are. And that's Charles Glass in a nutshell. Tommy the Train says death metal and black metal is the best. I agree with you in a, in a gym set, tr- session where you're lifting weight, absolutely. It actually forces you to focus on your, on your lifting. It agitates you, which... If you're in a comfort zone, you never want to go in a gym and hear a comforting waterfall or things like that, or even people at the front desk, how are you? Good morning. Like you're going into a uh, barbershop or something. That's not what you want to hear or see. You, you, should, you should strive to have equal strength in both sides of the body. That's what symmetry is all about. And you can test this by doing one arm movements from time to time. However, unless there is a significant discrepancy between strength and left to the right side of the body, you should not train one arm at a time. I believe it can reduce your intensity, makes your workout longer, and actually makes it hard to hit heavier tension. Big Daddy sees Brad knocking back some cold ones right now. 
listening to Backstreet Boys and shooting some eight ball. I see that too, Big Daddy. He's got air conditioner in there now. He hasn't really showed that room in one of his lives. And I find it almost hard to believe that if I were to come up there shooting alive, he would show his true colors as far as say, hey, turn that off or no, you can't come in. You can't film in there. But we'll see. Scat man, what's the worst pump you've ever felt pain wise? I was taking me and Meow Man's workouts at about the year 2001, 2002, when we were kicked out of the old world gym and we went to Gold's Gym on Spanish River Boulevard, now Federal Highway in Boca. And we were doing tests and Anadrol. And the Anadrol was in a blister pack. I believe it was from England. And they were 50 milligrams. And we would take two a day in the pumps during that workout because we would eat, you know, the scrambled eggs and the big French toast pre-workout meal. Go to the gym and train. The pumps were absolutely atrocious. A atrocious. And our strength at that time on all movements was atrocious as well. But I can remember doing arms and taking a shower there and getting dropped off to work and being so pumped for like an hour. And strangely enough, I knew I wasn't on insulin at the time. I wasn't on growth hormone. And I wasn't taking any pump products or not even a Viagra or Cialis. And to this day, those pumps were the most intense I think we ever had. New Jersey Misfits, I agree with that 100%. I used to tan naked in the backyard where I lived. I had a towel in case somebody came in the back, I'd throw it over me. And I do believe the neighbor's wife was, in fact, I saw her look at me throughout the... Uh, upper window in her home next to us, but that's when I was on the Milana tan too. Lenny, am I still with the misfits? Sure. It's just, you know, the, I'll be able to film and every day and things like that. Best way to whiten my teeth, Lawrence, is remember this rule. If you're not whitening, you're darkening. So every time you eat, you want a brush within five minutes of after you're eating at all times. That's why wherever I go, I have a toothbrush and toothpaste next to me. Also, if you drink anything other than water, which you really shouldn't, but if you have a pre-workout or something like that, always carry a little container and a bottle of mouth rinse. You did the commercial whitening rinses or uh, a mixture of water with diluted with one eighth of hydrogen peroxide. So you never want to let any type of food or anything build up on your teeth. Michael West was the most caffeine I've ever taken at once, probably close to a thousand milligrams. And I just felt horrible. <laughs> Sassy says you can take away her meth, but not her coffee. <laughs> That's unusual, Jerry. And this is kind of late for me. But I'm glad you're here with us. Advice on getting knee pain to go away. Yes, don't think about it. Don't think about you. As a matter of fact, don't act like you have knees. And what you concentrate in is the form of what you're doing. You never want to bend over in a way that's going to twist your knee out of an unnatural place. And always do your reps on squats, leg press, whatever, the same depth. And do not lock your knees out under no circumstances. I know Big Rammy, Mr. Olympia, he seems to lock his knees out on leg press. And he's been getting away with it, but I would not recommend that. 
Kaizen production says catch up. That's my slow, slow twitch fibers. Yes, Jerry, I've seen your Instagrams. Thank you. We will have a chat. Thank you, Noah Espinal. Good luck in your journey with the Navy, but remember, it's all about Noel. Ethan says, hope you can come here one day, Leonard. Where's here, Ethan? Where's here? Roy Larson, I like those logos. <laughs> Guzz OG did some shrooms tonight. I tried them once. It was made, made me very giggly. And on crypto tech says try Ukraine metal, ginger, G I N G E R. Thank you, and on crypto tech. Hello, Aunt Pam from Big Lenny. Wotan. Rusty trombones. Monkey prox is spread via, what is a rusty trombone? I'm trying to think. Lewis, I've had a lot of requests to react to Bard's latest live. I will, I will do that in the next few days, I promise. Thank you, Wotan. Thanks again. Sassy, your contributions are not measurable financially. The advice you've given to save our souls makes you the richest person in the world in my book. It says thank you for that life-saving and soul-saving advice that you give us, as well as beauty and quite honestly, you have a great sense of humor. Jack Dowd says, give all your love to Jesus. Yes, because when you love Jesus, you love yourself and everybody else. Rob D8870 says his main protein source is Slim Jims. He's all jacked up on Slim Jims, sometimes hot dogs. Hey, they are protein, Rob. I could suggest less expensive, more efficient sources, but you hit the nail on the head. You're eating protein. Well, thank you, Sassy. I appreciate that comment. You make my heart warm. And I can't wait to see you in heaven. You'll be sitting at the right hand of God sooner than we think. And that's a good thing. Yes, C93, I am on late. I apologize. Uh, did I accomplish anything today? Oh, yes. Yes. I have new insights into psychology being able to spread the message of when and how to listen to music and when not to and not to overdo it. That's a big thing that nobody really talks about, but I'm glad my father indirectly had me do that. It's hard to concentrate and focus when you have music around you, it really is. It's you know, you want your brain, just like when you're training, you want everything involved in that particular. And like I said, probably an agitator, agitatory music like metal is ideal for training, training heavy. Quick pump, we've either asked to move people's furniture quite a bit, but people don't realize our bodies were so busy or so big, rather, it's hard to fit up staircases, 
fit in their rooms and stuff. So you want a tall, you want a lanky person that's small, that's strong, that doesn't, it's not going to be huffing and puffing when you want, want to employ a mover. People are a little, they, you see a mask, Marcus rule that on his training tape. Ethan, love to come to Brazil. And of course, Canada, that would be sweet, Sassy, on a cool Canadian night, laying next to Sassy, holding hands, praying and talking, and just hearing your life story. Okay, Sassy, I'll do my best. I don't know if I can guarantee it, though, at that time, but... Is that an Instagram live, by the way? Big Daddy says, if you don't get your passport, he has to drive down to get me and sneak me over the border. How hard would that be? That's, that sounds like something that would make a great video, sneaking over the border to Canada. I've never heard of anybody doing that, interestingly enough. Kaizen, no one can forget Christina. But Sassy is definitely more a sexual attraction. Christina wasn't sexual. A YouTube live. Okay, Sassy. Rolito, you'll get alive in the next few days, I promise. Although Brad's latest live was very, very, I'm very, very concerned about him in many ways. Dr. Indiana Jones says, Lenny, is it true that a yell in LGBTQ comes from Lenny? <laughs> Lewis, my thoughts on Islam being the only religion that is respected. That's because most people that practice that religion demand respect, which is right. You can't say the same for Jews or Christians. That's a good point, but that's where Jews or Christians should use Islamists as a role model. <laughs> Kaizen Productions, he says he supports LGBT. Lenny, Genova, Brad, and the Prince. Rolita Fernandez says you need to demand respect if you want respect. Gon Glotten Islam has a hundred percent right about women. I agree with that. Josh Allen or Big Ben? I believe the Steelers are going to see the absence of Big Ben in a bad way coming up next month. Zinc can be toxic, Matt L, but at 50 milligrams twice a day, I believe he should be fine. I used to take it three times a day. I think that is unnecessary, but make sure you take a couple milligrams of copper with your 50 milligrams of zinc. Kodo777 says, why did aban Aladdin abandon you? He didn't abandon me. He calls me uncle even to this day. Jerry Nechampkin wants to see a sassy tour. Yeah, when I come up and visit her for sure. Kaizen Productions asks how to gain more discipline and end energy. First of all, the sleep, the nutrition, the hydration. Second of all, map your day out the day before. Have your clothes set out. 
have it so nothing's in the way. You get up, you go to the bathroom, you go downstairs, you get out in the sun, you prep your meals, eat your first meal, listen to something. I recommend always listening to something nutrition, health, and training related in the morning. Let your brain slowly wake up and acclimate to the day and get in that prayer and med meditation. You will have it, discipline and energy. AHRS brain that's been going on for years. Unfortunately, that's what New York City wants. And all they'll do is raise the tax rate. Messi's big dog says, do I regret a life in the gym? The end result for me and Jay seems to be less functional strength, cardio, ability to do basic tasks versus the average fat guy who has never lifted. Uh, no, not in, that, not in that sense, no. Now, as far as ability to do basic tasks, are they essential tasks? Are they things I really don't want to engage in? Aristophanes of Athens, which roids Aladdin was taken when you were living with him? I have no idea. Mike Markovic says, how much time should you spend in the sun every day? As much as you can, but you got to start out slow and build a base. Sexy sassy, that's right, yeah. The champ come. Okay, 4 p.m. your time, which is the same time as me, right, sassy? Would wokeness exist if World War II never happened? Uh, that's a good question. If we lost World War II, wokeness wouldn't exist. It's hard to be woke when you're in a slave labor camp. And I'm talking Japanese. Oh, she's an hour ahead. Okay. So she, Sassy's time is 3 p.m. my time. Okay, it's 11.26 in Canada right now where you're at. Okay, I understand. Thoughts on amputee pornography, Lenny? Well, it's good to see amputees engaging in sexual relations, although not a pornographic nature is not ideal, but, you know, they're people too, and Everybody deserves some kind of love and pleasure. Uh, there was actually amputees coming in the swingers club quite a bit and other swingers would get mad because this guy had a big wheelchair in the way and but <laughs> be surprised how many wheelchairs would come in. And of course we had to make accommodations for him, that's for sure. Lawrence Polorio Asar says, best way to get over having your heart broke. Time is the only thing that heals it, maybe. Staying busy. Right away, don't go looking at it for another relationship. Because that brings back thoughts of the, the initial one. And don't take it out with hate or thinking about the negatives of it. Just be busy. Let time heal it. Although it seems to hurt most at around the age of 25. That's for sure. Sir Brad Ford with a deep REM sleep crew checking in. Shane, do I take DHB? I haven't taken GHB or any of its analogs. And that's a key word, it's analogs, like 1.4 butyl dial, GBL. I haven't taken that since last October when I ran out. Definitely plan on visiting Croatia. Mike Markovic, my Croatian maniac brother. Do I wish I had some GHB? Sure, I always do. I'm freaking used to come to Halifax. That's right, the Croats did help the Reich. Thailand, of course. A 
Phil, please, anybody give me a German translation of Phil Play's message. Definitely, I want to. I want a genetic test. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Messi's big dog. No, I never got my stomach checked out. Do I think the Reich would have euthanized Genova, Relito? No. A lot of that euthanization is blown out of proportion. Euthanization was a very last resort. And the, the truth is, Germany had programs to have handicapped people contribute to society, which they did. They're not going to youth, they wouldn't euthanize anybody if they weren't of any value which sounds cruel, but it's true. And a lot of the people worked. I don't like this country and other countries where handicapped people do nothing. And they're given, you know, a disability check or they live in a group home and they're not expected to do anything. And that's what's sad. And I've, I see examples of that myself personally. And everyone wants to feel like they're needed Everyone wants to feel like they're contributing to society. There's only a few sociopaths would believe otherwise, but they had people doing tasks that were handicapped, that, that was things that they were able to do. And it was very, very rarely, if ever, used. Jerry and the Champkin, wind it down. Don't look at any screens. You could listen to something on the internet, but get the lights out and don't look at the screens. Get your IM sleep. Kaizen Production says, would the Reich have gotten moderate and broken up in the 90s like the Soviets if they won World War II? Eventually, I think their territorial conquests wouldn't have been so extreme, but I do believe they had the right idea for the world. And history will show that. And, and frighteningly, as you can see, the so-called winners of World War II, and I'm referring to Russia and China, could be everything the Third Reich warned us of and probably will be. Sir Brad Four, yeah, Tamika was great for the gym for motivation. She was a good sport. I wish I could have taken it further. Shane, the sores are basically broken skin, but my concern is the bottom of my feet are usually very numb. So, yes, China was Taiwan for many years. So, remember, excessive listening to music can be detrimental. And never, and this is a big thing of mine, never play your music to where somebody else is forced to hear it. I'm against that. To me, that's noise pollution. I don't want to hear your music. You shouldn't have to hear mine. And remember, nobody wants any quiet, peace and quiet anymore. Let's get back to that. Thank you, maniacs. I love everyone. Good night.